In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download, install and configure GNS3 with a virtual box. We're gonna download and install the GNS3 GUI. We're gonna download and install VirtualBox. We're gonna download and configure the GNS3 VM. We're gonna do the integration between the GNS3 VM and the GNS3 GUI. Now, in other videos, I've explained concepts such as the GNS3 VM, the GNS3 GUI, nested virtualization, the requirement for nested virtualization and other topics. I'm not gonna do that in this video. In this video, I'm simply gonna show you how to download, install and configure those components as quickly as possible. In this example, I'm using a Windows 8 computer. It's got an AMD processor. At the time of this recording, VirtualBox version 6.0 only supports nested virtualization with AMD processors. You need to use nested virtualization if you wanna run appliances such as iOS V, Cisco routers or iOS V layer two switches. So in this example, I'm using an older computer of mine. This is a laptop running Windows 8 and I've specifically selected this computer because it's got an AMD processor. Now at the time of this recording, VirtualBox 6.0 has been released. When you watch this video, there may be a later release of VirtualBox. So check the VirtualBox documentation to see if nested virtualization is supported on Intel processors. At the time of this recording, it wasn't. I wanna use nested virtualization because I wanna use GNS3 appliances such as Cisco IOS V routers and Cisco IOS V layer two switches. A lot of GNS3 appliances require nested virtualization. And because I wanna use these appliances, I'm gonna use a VirtualBox 6.0 with GNS3 on an AMD processor. Okay, so that said, let's start the installation. The first thing you need to do is go to gns3.com and click free download. Now, if you haven't got an account, create one. If you have got an account, log in with your created account. GNS3 is free open source software, but you need to be registered to download the GNS3 software. Now, again, because I'm using a Windows computer here, I'm gonna select the Windows download. At the time of this recording, the version is 2.1.11. So I simply need to wait for that software to download. And now that it's downloaded, I'm gonna run the GNS3 installation. So I'm gonna click yes to start the installation process. Click next. GNS3 is once again open source software licensed under the GNU General Public License. It's free software, but you need to agree to the GNU General Public License. And then you can select your startup menu. I'm gonna basically stick with all the defaults here. Different GNS3 components can be installed if you wanna use GNS3, you need to install GNS3. WinPCAP is required to send and receive packets on Ethernet cards. Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer. Different components are installed. I'm gonna stay with the defaults and click next. I'm gonna install GNS3 in the default installation folder. And essentially all you need to do now is follow the prompts and allow GNS3 to install. Now sometimes people have issues downloading Wireshark. The link to the Wireshark download could have changed and therefore GNS3 can't install the software. You can simply skip that if you're having problems. You don't have to install all of these components, but I'm gonna once again just stay with the defaults. So basically GNS3 here is extracting various software components and installing them installing Python as an example, installing other files. Now sometimes you'll have problems where Wireshark can't be downloaded. I'm gonna retry the download, but it's still failing. This happens because GNS3 is configured to download Wireshark from a specific URL, and that URL may have changed. So I'm gonna say no, 
and basically skip the installation of Wireshark. Genius 3 consists of multiple components. Wireshark is one of them. It's an optional component. It's really useful for doing Wireshark captures within GNS3, but if you have problems downloading it here, then just download it manually. You can see here that Solar Putty is currently being installed. I need to install the .NET framework in this example. Okay, as you can see now, the installation has completed successfully. I'm gonna click Next. You can optionally install the SolarWinds standard tool set. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna click Next. So the GNS3 GUI has now installed. I'm gonna click Finish to start GNS3. A thank you page is displayed. I'm gonna close that. And as you can see, GNS3 has now started up. A setup wizard displays. I'm gonna click Cancel. I just want to see GNS3 running locally. That's a really important step. Make sure that GNS3 starts locally. It's important to get the GUI running locally first. If you have problems getting GNS3 running locally, have a look on the GNS3 documentation. For some tips such as getting started with Windows, it provides some tips about installation requirements and issues you may have. You can also ask for help in the GNS3 community. So if you're having problems getting GNS3 running, have a look in the GNS3 community for help. So this is what you wanna see, something similar to this, where, where you have a local GNS3 server running. In this example, I've got my HP Windows 8 computer running running a local GNS3 server process. Under Edit Preferences, I've only got a local server enabled. I haven't enabled the GNS3 VM. That's what I wanna do. I wanna get GNS3 running with a virtual box. When using Windows, it's recommended that you use the GNS3 VM. In other words, you're gonna use a GNS3 GUI plus the GNS3 VM. So to run the GNS3 VM, I need a hypervisor. In this example, I'm gonna use VirtualBox. So I'm gonna download VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. I'm once again using a Windows computer, Windows 8. The GNS3 VM is a Linux operating system. So I'm gonna to need to download a hypervisor. And once again, in this example, I'm gonna use VirtualBox to host the GNS3 VM on Windows. Now before I do that, I'm gonna exit out of GNS3. So I'm gonna close down the GNS3 GUI. So the GNS3 GUI has shut down and what I'll do is install the VirtualBox software as soon as the download completes. What I'll do actually while the software is downloading is click download on GNS3 and in this example, I'm gonna click download the VM for GNS3. I wanna download a VirtualBox GNS3 VM. So just to show you the process again, go to the GNS3 website, click download, click download VM for GNS3, and then click the relevant GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm gonna download the VirtualBox GNS3 VM. Okay, so my VirtualBox software has downloaded. I'm gonna click on the EXE to install it. I'm simply gonna click next, next, next through the VirtualBox setup. So next, 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 yes. Click install. So I'm not changing any of the settings. I'm just accepting all the defaults to keep it simple. VirtualBox is now installing. During this installation, it will add additional NICs to your computer, so you have to allow it to do that. So simply select all the default options. The installation is completed. I'm gonna click Finish to start a VirtualBox. 
Now, I previously had VirtualBox running on this computer, so I've got some virtual machines already set up in VirtualBox. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna go to my download folder where the Genius 3 VM was downloaded. So here's the Genius 3 VM. It's a zip file. So what I'm gonna do is extract that file. Now once that's extracted, I'll see an OVA file in the directory. It's still busy extracting at the moment. But as soon as that's completed, I'll be able to open up this file in VirtualBox. So there you go, it's completed. It's a 313 meg file. So in VirtualBox, I'm gonna go to File, Import Appliance, Browse to my Downloads directory, select the OVA and click Open, click Next. I'm gonna use all the defaults and click Import. That will now import the GNS3 VM into VirtualBox. You simply need to wait for that import process to complete. Okay, so that's now completed. I've got a GNS3 VM imported into VirtualBox. So I can go back to the GNS3 GUI and start it up again. You can start the GNS3 application by using the shortcut on the desktop or by going to the start menu. It's just an application that you can start up. I pinned GNS3 to the taskbar when it was running. If you don't wanna show this menu again, click don't show this again and click close. What I'm gonna do now is go to edit preferences we already have a local server running, but I want to enable the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna click Enable GNS3 VM. The hypervisor that I'm using or virtualization engine that I'm using is VirtualBox. The VM name is GNS3 VM. Click Refresh to see a list of virtual machines. Default is GNS3 VM. Specify the amount of RAM and CPUs that you wanna to allocate to the GNS3 VM. The more you allocate, the better. This will depend a lot on the amount of RAM that you have in your computer. But I'm gonna make this two gig, two CPUs, click apply and click OK. What happens now is GNS3 connects to VirtualBox and starts up the GNS3 VM. So you should see something like this happening in VirtualBox where the GNS3 VM starts booting up. The GNS3 GUI is controlling the GNS3 VM. We're gonna do everything via the GNS3 GUI and not to really interact with the GNS3 VM. We simply wanna make sure that it boots up. The speed of this will depend very much on your computer. But notice we can see GNS3 has started. Notice this problem, KVM support is not available. We wanna enable KVM support. So I want you to be aware of this issue. You need to enable nested virtualization within a virtual box before you can run appliances such as iOS V routers. So the integration is working. So what I'm gonna do is shut the GNS3 application down, which will in turn shut down the GNS3 VM. Don't try and run before you can walk. So check the various basic settings first. I started up the GNS3 GUI. I've started up the GNS3 VM with the GNS3 GUI. What I'm gonna do now is change the settings of the GNS3 VM. And under system processor, I'm gonna enable a nested VTX or AMD V. Now VirtualBox is complaining about some of the memory utilization and remote display. So what I'm gonna do here, is simply disable the remote display, make sure that there's enough RAM allocated to the screen memory, 
check the memory. So this is too much according to VirtualBox. This is actually set via the GNS3 GUI. So you need to change those settings via the GNS3 GUI. So settings such as the memory allocation, process allocation is set via the GNS3 GUI rather than here, but make sure that you enable nested virtualization. Start up GNS3 once again. What should happen is the GNS3 GUI should start and we should see that the GNS3 VM is automatically started. So the GNS3 GUI has started. It's now starting the GNS3 VM. So if I go back to VirtualBox, we should see this kickstart. There you go, we can see that VirtualBox is booting up. I'll go back to the GNS3 GUI and I'll create a project called test, test one, and click OK. Notice the local server has started. We're still waiting for the GNS3 VM to boot up. Again, this very much depends on your computer speed. This is not a very powerful computer that I've got here, so it's a bit slow. Okay, so the VM is booted up. GUI is booted up. Notice the difference. KVM support is available. We want to see this when using certain devices such as Cisco IOS V routers. Devices such as Cisco IOS V, switches such as Cisco IOS V layer 2 require nested virtualization, so you'll need to see this to be able to use appliances such as Cisco IOS V. Now, one of the questions that's most often asked is where can I get Cisco IOS images? The recommended place is from Cisco Viral. So go to viral.cisco.com. Click Get Viral. Now, if you haven't got a viral account, you'll need to buy a viral license. In my example, I already have an account, so I'm going to click Login. I'm going to log in with my username and my password. Click Login. Click My Account. Click Download Viral. Now, I'm not able to give you Cisco IOS images. You'll need to download them from the Cisco website. So you'll need to have a account that allows you to download Cisco IOS images, or you'll need to buy a viral license. Now, this example is taking a long time to download. I've sometimes had issues with the viral website. Sometimes it goes offline or it takes a while to download images. I've previously downloaded those images. So what I'll do here is back in GNS3, I've selected routers, available appliances, and I've selected Cisco IOS V, and I'll drag that to the workspace. I'll click Next. Notice recommendation, run this on the GNS3 VM. That requires KVM support. So I'm gonna click Next, click Next. GNS3 now scans for the iOS images as well as the iOS startup config file. So I need to have this image and this startup config file to import this appliance into GNS3. Now, if you have problems with the Cisco website, such as downloading viral images from Cisco's website, you need to take that up with Cisco. I unfortunately can't help you, and neither can GNS3. You need to raise that with Cisco. I previously downloaded this file from Cisco Viral. So even though I'm not able to download it at the moment, I previously downloaded the software. So now in GNS3, I'm gonna click Refresh. GNS3 searches the Downloads folder and finds this file. If it's not found, click Import and then go to where you've downloaded the file and click Open to import the file to the GNS3 VM. So in this example, the file has been uploaded to the GNS3 VM. So I've got the 
operating system uploaded to the Genus 3 VM. I still need to get the startup config file. I'm gonna click download to download it. Now sometimes I've had problems where that file is not downloaded. So if that happens, go to the Genus 3 website. Go to the documentation page and search for iOS V. And then click on this link, download startup configuration file. Now in Genus 3, when you click on that file, that'll take you to sourceforge.net and download the configuration file. Typically, all you need to do is click on this file and click download, and it'll do the same thing. Download it. In my example, I did it manually. I'm gonna click refresh. Notice this version is now ready to be installed. Operating system has been found. Startup config has been found. I'm gonna click next. Click yes to install this new version. I'm gonna leave QMU settings at default and click next. Click next again, click finish. The appliance is now installed. So under installed appliances, I now have this appliance. The way you get that is to go to routers in this example, and rather than selecting available appliances, you select installed appliances because that appliance has now been installed. I'm gonna drag the router to the workspace drag another one to the workspace. So I've got two iOS V routers running on the Genus 3 VM. I'll connect them together. So these are my two routers once again. And what I can do now is start them up and open up consoles to the routers. In this example, I'm using PuTTY as the terminal emulation software. The routers are now booting up. I'm able to run these routers in VirtualBox because KVM support is available, and that's because I enabled nested virtualization in the VirtualBox. That's only supported currently at the time of this recording on AMD processors. So I'll make this a bit bigger so we can see the router consoles better. There's the first router, second router. Now again, this PC that I'm using isn't very powerful, so it takes a while for these routers to boot up. If you're using a more powerful computer, they would boot up a lot quicker. Okay, so the routers have booted up. I'll name this router one, configure the gigabit zero zero interface with an IP address like that. Do something similar on router two, host name router two, interface gigabit zero zero, IP address 10.1.1.2. Ping 10111. That's assuming that I no shut the interface, which I didn't do, so let me no shut it. And hopefully those pings should start succeeding. Interface has come up now. Okay, I took too long with the no shut. Let's see if router one can ping router two. There you go. Pings are now succeeding. So router two can ping router one. Can router one ping router two? Yes, it can. On this side, router EIGRP 100. I'll enable EIGRP and create a loopback interface of quadruple two. On router one, create a loopback interface quadruple one and I'll enable EIGRP. 
hopefully a neighbor relationship will be formed between these two routers. There you go, neighbor relationship has now been formed. So show IP route shows us that router one has learnt the route of the loopback of router two and router one can ping the loopback of router two on router two, router two rather, show IP route. Route to the loopback of router one is in the routing table and I can ping that loopback address from router two. Now, this computer isn't a very powerful computer. It's only got four gig of RAM, not a very fast CPU, but I'm able to get iOS V routers running within the GNS3 VM, running within VirtualBox on a Windows 8 computer. So there you go. That's how you download, install, and configure GNS3, integrate the GUI with the GNS3 VM running on VirtualBox. I'm David Bumble, and I wanna wish you all the very best.